All right, so season six of Alone is starting here real soon, if it hasn't already when I air this video. But I thought it would be fun to go over the 10 items I would bring this season they're going to the Arctic. And so I made a list of 10 items. Uh, then I found this. And what this is, is this is a list of all of the gear the participants get to take with them that is not included in the 10 items that they have to choose from. And then it's the full list of gear that they have to pick their 10 items from. And then there's prohibited items as well. And when I went through this, it completely changed my list. I took a lot of things off my list, uh, either because they're provided or because uh, they're prohibited. And so going through this, I'm going to go through this list with you. Uh, I'll leave a link to it down below as well if you want to print your own copy or check it out. Uh, this is an older list. This isn't the most up-to-date list. It's an older one. So uh, this is what I just was able to find with the most amount of information. And it really changed everything. So first of all, the clothes do not count as 10 items. And so you're able to bring one pair of high leg hunting boots, so I'd bring my muck boots, uh, two pairs of outdoor pants, uh, un they can unzip into shorts, one t-shirt, one fleece or wool shirt, hooded or unhooded, three pairs of wool socks, one hat brimmed wool or baseball, so I'd probably bring this hat and I'll tell you why in a bit, uh, one bandana or shemag, I would choose the shemag, uh, one pair of gloves, one light outdoor jacket, two pairs of underwear, one rain jacket and rain pants, uh, one thermal underwear, long underwear, one pair of gaiters, one pair of Crocs sandals or Keen sandals, so camp shoes basically, uh, one toothbrush, one pair of prescription eyeglasses, and one personal photograph. And so right there, you have a full wardrobe. You have a full wardrobe. You're going to get lots of insulation value. You're going to get a lot of cover. Uh, the pants can unzip, so if you were in a hotter climate, uh, you could have two pairs of pants and shorts, essentially. Uh, two wool shirts, hooded or unhooded. Uh, the three pairs of wool socks. Uh, the light outdoor jacket. And then the long underwear, the rain jacket, rain pants. Uh, you basically have a pretty decent shelter just in your clothing alone. And then uh, adding to that is winter packs. These items were provided to each participant and do not count towards the 10 specific items. And so you don't get to choose what you bring. You just uh, handed something and you have to make it work. And that is one wool sweater, one heavy wool sweater. One pair of gloves, either wool or standard winter gloves. And then one trapper hat or toboggan. And so, again, you, you, you're you going to be completely warm just in these clothes. And so I would have a baseball cap, keep the sun off my face, and I can turn it around, keep the sun off my neck. And then I would have a toboggan as well. And then also... Uh, gloves. So in the gloves that I would bring, I would of course bring like some leather work gloves and then I would have warm gloves on top of that. And so you, I'm already pretty sheltered from a lot of elements here just off of the clothes alone. Uh, tracking and safety, these are provided. So this is provided again uh, by alone you don't get to pick any of these items they just are supplied to you and again they do not count towards your 10 items and so your camera equipment uh, you get two safety tools and so either a canister of wild animal repellent an air horn or a flare and then you get one rules and regulations guide a backpack and so you can't choose your own backpack they provide you with a backpack now a camera pack Emergency flare, the camera pack too, I think that's that Pelican suitcase. I, uh, One of the guys that was on the show was saying that the thing was like, had like 60 pounds of gear in it. 
So I don't know if the whole thing weighed 60 pounds or if it was just the gear inside of it. But he said 60 pounds of gear uh, just for camera, just to film out there, which is crazy. Uh, then you have emergency flare, which is separate from the animal safety tools. Uh, satellite phone, emergency flotation device, and so a life jacket basically. Uh, first aid kit, military type. Uh, one small mirror, and then here is what ended up changing some of the things on my list is a 20 by 20 canvas tarp and then also a 10 by 10 tarp for protecting your camera and equipment. And so you're given two tarps. You're given a 20 by 20 canvas tarp and then a 10 by 10 tarp. And so I don't know if you would need to bring another tarp. The 20 by 20 would obviously be your shelter. The 10 by 10 you could just make you could just throw it over your camera gear and uh, you'd be pretty well off I would think I don't know if you would need a third tarp uh, one GPS tracking device here's another item that I put I uh, get one headlamp and so I included a headlamp in one of my 10 C's but or 10 items but they hate they give you one and so you really don't need to bring another one uh, one emergency ration pack to include water and food. And so you you are given a little bit of water and food, I suppose, so that when you first get out there and you're first establishing stuff, that uh, you do have a little bit of food and a little bit of water to get you past the first night, probably. It's probably not a lot, but it's something. You are hand, You do have fresh water and food to get you through a little while, at least. Uh, and then the individual items. These are the 10 items. Uh, these are the items that you have to pick your 10 from. And they're in different categories. And so I'll go over each category and tell you what I think of each thing. And so for shelter, you have a 12 by 12 ground tarp. Uh, grommeted, approved. But again, I don't know if you would need a third tarp. 8mm uh, climbing rope. Uh, 10 meters, you only get 10 meters of climbing rope and you get 20 meters of 550 cord. And so I would prefer the extra cordage. And so I don't know, you'd have to pick from that. And then a hatchet, a saw, and an axe. And so you're already getting some of your tools in here. Uh, and then bedding, you get a multi seasonal sleeping bag that fits within provided backpack. So you can't just bring some monster bag. Uh, it has to be able to fit. All 10 of your items need to be able to fit inside the backpack that they provide. So they're going to give you a backpack and then you have to make sure that everything you bring fits inside of that pack. Uh, Bivy bag, Gore-Tex sleeping bag. So even, because like I would bring my military module sleep system. Uh, even if I brought the black negative 10 bag, if I put that Gore-Tex Bivy on it, it counts as two items now instead of just the one. Which, I, I don't know, that kind of sucks, but... Sleeping pad, hammock, and then that's it for bedding. And then next is cooking. And so then you can get a pot with lid, uh, two quart max. And so I don't know, because there's those pots where it's one pot and then another pot is the lid. I don't know if they would count that. Uh, I don't know. I, I haven't seen anybody use that set up so I don't know if they would allow it but I think that would be pretty decent because then you can boil water in one and cook in the other and then you're not mixing all that stuff together your water doesn't always taste like fish you know what I mean uh, steel frying pan flint or ferro rod set enamel bowl for eating spoon canteen or water bottle bear canister so a bear canister counts as one of your ten items which I found weird because they have all these safety items and stuff to uh, deter animals and you would think that a bear canister would just be on that list you'd be provided one but it's one of your 10 items is a bear canister uh, hygiene is a bar of soap tube of toothpaste uh, face flannel roll of dental floss small bottle of biodegradable shower soap Shaving razor and one blade, a uh, towel, but it has to be 30 inches by 60 inches, and a comb. 
So just basic hygiene items. Uh, I don't know if anybody would bring any of this stuff. Because you are provided a toothbrush, but to bring toothpaste is considered one of your 10 items. So I, I don't know if anyone would bring that. You can just use the ash or your fire. But uh, hunting, you have 300 yard roll of nylon single filament fishing line and 25 assorted hooks, no lures. Uh, I heard that on this season, the hooks aren't allowed to have barbs on them either. So that was gonna make it even harder yet. Uh, primitive bow with six arrows must be predominantly made of wood because it needs to be a primitive bow. Uh, you'll see in the prohibited items that you can't use a professional bow at all. Uh, small gauge gill net, slingshot catapult, net forging bag, 3.5 uh, roll of trapping wire, 3.5 pound roll of trapping wire. And so again, you got a lot of I don't know there's a lot of restriction in this and there's a lot of a lot of these things are like you can bring a slingshot or a bow you know or you can bring a gill net or fishing line and hooks and there's a lot of things where I don't think you would need both you know what I mean uh, food you can get five pounds of beef jerky five pounds of dried uh, Ligums lentils mix, five pounds of bell tong, five pounds of hard tack military biscuits, five pounds of chocolate, five pounds of pemmican, five pounds of gorp, uh, five pounds of flour, or two pounds of rice or sugar, and one pound of salt. So you can bring seasonings for the stuff that you catch and cook. Uh, but again, everything else is five pounds. But you only get two pounds of rice or sugar and one pound of salt. So you get three pounds in that ration. But a two pounds of rice, I think, would go a long way. Uh, tools, a pocket knife, a hunting knife, multi-tool, sharpening stone, roll of duct or, duct or electrical tape, small shovel, small sewing kit, a carabiner. So you can choose a carabiner as one of the ten items. An LED flashlight, but again you get provided a headlamp. A pair of ice spikes. Uh, and that's it. That's the whole list. And then the prohibited items are a compass, fuel or matches, bug, sc bug spray or mosquito repellent, sunscreen, chapstick, sunglasses, beauty products, maps, compass again. They must not really not want you to have a compass. Uh, unapproved technology, anything with a battery and an anything with a battery or an engine, uh, as in a cell phone, computer, watch, anything with a battery uh, or anything that needs to be charged. Firearms of any kind, ammunition, explosives of gunpowder, animal poison, professional fishing rods, fishing lures, flies, and bait. Uh, fishing traps, food or beverage, except the options from the selected list. Decoys, animal calls, tree stands, uh, professional bows or crossbows. Scopes of any kind, tents or shelters, stoves, pressure cookers or other cooking appliances. Uh, hydration packs aren't allowed. Fire pits, electric or propane lanterns, inflatable boats, uh, filtration Filtration, purification devices, iodine tablets, uh, coolers or food storage boxes, except optional bear canister. And then in the beginning here, it also says that everything is prohibited. The following items are prohibited. This is not exhaustive, but it is an item that is not listed above. It is also prohibited. So everything that's not listed is prohibited. And then they go ahead and they list a whole bunch of stuff that you would want to have with you and uh, just to make sure that you know that you cannot bring it with you. Uh, so my mindset here, again, you get to bring a lot of stuff. That doesn't count towards your 10, uh, 10 items. And then on top of that, the stuff you have to pick from, a lot of it's not that great, right? Like uh, you're not gonna wanna, you, you don't really need climbing rope and paracord. You don't really need a third tarp. Uh, you don't really need a hatchet and an axe. Uh, you don't really need a sleeping pad and a hammock. 
Uh, you don't really need a fry pan and a pot or a bowl and a pot or a water bottle and a pot. Uh, a spoon, you can make a spoon easy enough. Uh, all the hygiene items, the hunting items again, they kind of overlap into each other. The food, the tools. And so I went through and even, so with this list that's provided, again, this is an old list, but I went through and I picked all the stuff that I would want. Everything that I can choose from, if I could bring whatever I wanted, there's only 13 things on the list that I would bring. And those are a 550 cord, a saw, a sleeping bag, a sleeping pad, a pot, a ferro rod, a canteen, fishing line and hooks, a gill net, a slingshot, a knife, sharpening stone, and bow and arrow. And uh, so yeah, there's 13 things. And so you only really got to eliminate uh, three things out of everything on that list. And so when I thought about this, we're going to the Arctic. And I'm the kind of person, if you've been watching my channel for a long time, you know that I'm the kind of guy that wants my gear to work for me. I don't want to put in my calories and my effort. I want my gear to work for me. And so the first thing that I truly care about is staying warm and comfortable. Uh, if you watch the prior seasons to Alone, uh, uh, most of them spend a lot of time in bed, laying down, just preserving calories, just exhausted, just sleeping. Uh, your bed is the most important part of your stay. Uh, so I made sure to include a sleeping bag and a sleeping pad. Now I think it's important that that sleeping pad, especially in the Arctic, creates that barrier between you and the cold underneath you. Uh, you can still put down your debris, you can still put down your pine bottles, you can still put down a nice thick uh, bedding, but having that sleeping pad on top of it to just keep the cold from transferring, uh, I think, and it's a lot more comfortable. It would just, it's just a better in my opinion. It's the place you're going to spend most of your time. It's the thing that's going to keep you the warmest. And uh, you don't have to stress so much over fire. Because I think that's a lot, one thing that a lot of people stress about and are concerned about. They're always, i got to keep my fire going. i got to start this fire. And, you know, knowing that I can just go to bed, be warm, sleep as much as I want without having to tend to the fire or having the fire go out, I think, I think it's worth it. Uh, so I have a sleeping bag and the sleeping pad. And so that was easy for me to pick. Uh, from there, uh, again, I'm not going to be out there forever. I know that they push this year. You're going to be out there for a year. Nobody is coming even close to a year. Uh, if I was going to go on the show, instead of counting up, I would count down from 100. Uh, as soon as I'm out there for 100 days, I'm tapping out. Uh, I'm probably never going to be on the show, especially after making this video. They're going to be like, ah, we don't want that guy. He's not even going to try. But 100 days is way longer than anybody's ever been out there and so I would set a hundred days and I would count down you know and instead of looking at how much time is left for a whole year you will get ex more and more excited and you, it's easier for me to keep my morale up and keep a good mindset when I see the days going away like I got 90 days before I'm going home. I got 40 more days before I'm going home. I got 30 more days, you know, like it'll get easier for me instead of harder like it does for a lot of other people. Uh, again, I've never been in a situation like that. It's just me guessing. But uh, I just know that for me, counting down from 100 will probably keep my morale a lot higher and it'll make me want... It, the suffering won't suck as much, you know, because I, I can see the end. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. 
And so I would, a hundred days. And then on the hundred and first day, I'd hit that button and I'd go home. I accomplished something extreme. Uh, I think Fowler was the longest participant at 89 days. And so at 101, uh, I think I did well. And so with that in mind, that mindset, uh, some of the tools that I would bring with me is uh, an axe. Now when it comes to the axe, I'm going to use the axe to cut trees down and stuff, but you can also, I'm probably going to use the hammer end of it just as much as the blade. Uh, you can use that to pound in steaks, uh, especially in the Arctic where everything is frozen. Uh, if you've ever, making tent pegs is really easy, but if you've ever pounded them into the ground, it's not that easy because if they're too narrow, they break, and if they're too fat, they're hard to drive in. And so having that hammer pull on the back of the axe to pound those stakes in, uh, I can get big fat tent pegs and pound them in. And so uh, I'd probably end up using that hammer a lot. I can cut through the ice, I can chop the ice. Uh, there's just, there's a lot more you can do with an axe than just chop down trees. And I would probably be utilizing both ends of my axe just as much as the axe head itself. Uh, next tool would be my knife. You have to have a knife. You have to have something that can carve uh, and whittle and make traps and make different things. And the other thing is I was going to bring my big BK-9. I was... I always talk about my BK-9 being, if I'm going somewhere that I'm unfamiliar with, my BK-9. But then I started thinking about like processing down squirrels and rabbits and fish. And I don't know if I want my big BK-9 to skin a squirrel or process down fish. And so because I'm bringing an axe, I probably don't need the larger knife, so I'll probably bring like my Genesis, uh, my Larry Roberts Genesis, something smaller that I can skin smaller animals with. Uh, another thing is nobody's really caught any big game on a loan. And it's just a bunch of little small meals. And I feel like they waste a lot of time trying to get that big hunt in. You know, they're trying to get take down a deer, or they're trying to take down something big and they miss a lot of little opportunities and so I would go into it again focusing on my hundred days to just little meals you know I don't need a big feast I just a, a squirrel for lunch a squirrel for dinner a rabbit a fish just a bunch of little meals to get me by uh, until the end of my hundred days and so being able to skin those smaller animals, I think is a pretty huge part of the whole experience. And so I would probably bring my Genesis. Uh, next tool would be my pot. Uh, two quart pot, the biggest pot I can. Again, if they allow the two, I would probably bring the two. Just because once you cook fish in a pot uh, especially when you're out camping a lot of times if you have something that's got a really strong flavor or a really strong you know and you go to just rinse it out you don't have the soap or the anything to really clean it you're just always rinsing it out that taste can kind of stay in that pot and sometimes you just need a a break you know sometimes that same fishy water can get to you after a while so I think if they allowed my lid to be a separate pot I would do that but again getting as much as you can from that fish and getting as much nutrients and as much calories and as much everything as you can uh, you still want to use that other pot but again it's, it would just be a break from the monotony of the same flavor again and again so I don't know I went back and forth a long time but I think I would bring the two 
just for a morale boost. Uh, next tool is a ferro rod. I, I, I don't know why anybody wouldn't bring a ferro rod. Another thing is I saw uh, people, they were bringing their hooks and stuff and Altoids tins. And so you could use the shamog that they provide you and you can make uh, char cloth or you can find punk wood or natural materials to char. And it will just save that ferro rod and it will be easier to make fire, you know, that next fire mentality. Uh, it's just going to make everything a lot easier having a ferro rod than trying to do it any other way. It's the way that I have the most experience starting fire and so it shouldn't be a problem with me as long as I can get that first fire and then get the char cloth and then move forward and find a rhythm. It should it shouldn't be as stressful and it shouldn't be as time consuming. Uh, it should get easier as I'm out there. And it's a resource that's going to last the whole trip regardless. Uh, next tool is a slingshot. So I went back and forth on do I want to bring a bow or a slingshot. And it came down to ammunition. You're allowed six arrows. I think they're allowed more arrows now. But in this list, six arrows. And if you lose an arrow, if you break an arrow, uh, you, your resources are dwindling. Right? With a slingshot, you kind of have an infinite amount of ammo. As long as there's lot rocks laying around, as long as there's river rocks and there's stuff lying around, you can shoot a pine cone if you wanted to. Uh, you, the ammunition isn't going to run out. And I can just shoot pine cones just for fun, just to get my mind off of everything. Uh, I don't, I'm not worried about conserving my arrow tips. I'm not worried about not breaking or sending it into a stump. You know, having an arrow and lo lodged into a stump isn't the funnest thing either. And so having a slingshot and just shooting just to shoot or taking out birds and squirrels and other things, I just feel like you're not going to be as concerned and as worried and as stressed out about your ammunition as you are with your bow and your arrows and so that's why I picked a slingshot again I'm not big game hunting while I'm out there I'm just plinking off the little little meals one at a time uh, fishing rod and hooks again I said that if I could I'd bring that Eltoids tin so I could make char material to uh, make fire making easier and then again you can with the fishing line and hooks, you can use them to catch birds and you can use them to catch different things. Uh, and so I would definitely bring fishing line and hooks. You can use it for a lot more than just, you can use the line as cordage. Uh, I am bringing 550 cord though. It's one of those things where you can, cordage saves so, you can make traps, you can make shelter. Uh, even if you make like a log cabin or something and they've got two bowed out limbs, you can use cordage to bend them together. Uh, you can, if my line breaks, right, I can use the inner strands of the 550 cord. I can, it's just, it's, it's the fix all when it comes to being outdoors. You can use cordage and knots to do a lot of different work for you. Uh, you can just hang your clothes out to dry. You, there's just so much you can do with cordage. And so I'm going to bring as much as I can. I'm going to use the fishing line as cordage. I'm going to use it for catching fish as well. But I'm going to be using the 550 cord probably in the same manner. And then my last item. So those are the nine. The last item that I chose is trail mix. And they call it GORP on here. But uh, the reason I choose the trail mix is because it's three different things. It's peanuts, raisins, and M&Ms, and, or chocolate. And it's just that variety, you know. And if I'm able to make it myself, I would kind of make it a little, it'd be mostly peanuts. 
uh, because peanuts you get that protein and you get that saltiness to keep you hydrated. It would be mostly like peanuts with a little bit of chocolate and then a little bit of raisins. And I would try to like count it out, you know, so like 100 days, if there's like 300 things in there, I would eat three a day. But I don't think I would eat a peanut, a raisin, and a chocolate every day. I think I would eat like three peanuts, you know, so like each day is a different treat. Uh, I would try to count that out, you know, and it, so that I know once my gorp's gone, I made it my 100 days. And it's just... I don't know. It's fun to think about. It's fun to think about these things. Uh, going through this list, like I said, I had 10 items. I had a flashlight on there. I had a tarp. I had a bow and arrow. And I had, I had 10 items. And then once I went through what, uh, what they were providing me, uh, I changed almost everything. Uh, I still have my sleeping bag, I still have a ferro rod, I still have a knife, I still have the fishing line hooks. But, uh, yeah, I was going to bring a saw, but then I decided to bring the axe instead. Uh, because, again, the hammer pull, the 550 cord I was going to bring no matter what. The sleeping pad I'm only bringing because it's the Arctic. Uh, if we were going somewhere warmer, I don't think I'd bring the sleeping pad just because you can make a comfortable bedding. Uh, but seeing that it is the Arctic, having that barrier between the hot and cold, I think is really important. Uh, the slingshot, again, just because of the ammo. Uh, being able to shoot whatever I have and being able to not worry about it, I think, will be... It's just a fun thing to do, shooting. So, you know, you can set up a tree and put a little target on it and then... Just practice uh, and you don't have to worry about ruining your arrows so that's why I brought the slingshot the pot I went back and forth on the pot if I wanted the two or if I wanted just a big two core pot and I think I want the two I don't know if it's allowed like I said but that's what I want and then the trail mix I think it's just a the variety is gonna be nice so with all of that I want to know in that comment section down below, what 10 items would you bring? I'll leave a link to this list, uh, the website that I got this list from, in the description box down below. And uh, you can go through and you can see and you can plan. And it's, it was really fun making this list. So even if you don't tell me, even if you don't share it, uh, going through and looking at all this stuff, it really helps me get excited for the show. I'm really excited about this one, uh, especially knowing what they have. And uh, I'm going to go through now and I'm going to see what each person picked. But that's it for this video. I can't wait to see you guys on the next one. Uh, I got a video right here that you guys probably want to check out. YouTube thinks that you'll like it just as much as this one. And I will see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.